books, books. I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi, readers. Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I am celebrating my 50th Stephen King book sell. Yes, that is right. 50. I have officially read 50 Stephen King books in my journey. And this book was only published in the uh, the 2000s. So I still have a ways to go, but I think 50 is a pretty big uh, accomplishment. So this book, even though it looks chunky, um, I got this at a library sale, so it's actually large print. So it's not as chunky as it appears. Overall, I did enjoy this book. It's not my favorite. It's never going to be in like my top 10, but I found it entertaining and I'm going to tell you why. So first, let me give you the quick setup. So the story focuses around a middle-aged man. His name is Clayton, and he is an artist from a small town, but he recently got this like big deal. So he has to go to this like business meeting in the city. So he travels out to the city and while he is there, all of a sudden people around him start acting very strangely, very violent, very aggressive, because there is something that is happening to people who are on their cell phones. So this phenomenon is known as the pulse and basically it turns people into these like mindless, crazy, violent, uh, we'll say people, but they're not really people anymore, I don't think. This book very much reminds me of The Stand. It's not as long as The Stand or as complex and complicated, but in The Stand, you kind of have this like virus that affects everyone and you have a few people who are immune. And the same thing happens in this book where you have this wide range phenomenon that's affecting all these people and we have, you know, a group of survivors that are left behind. Also in The Stand, there is this kind of battle between good and evil, the man in black. And again, we have a similar situation in Cell. As the story goes along and the characters start to try and figure out how the pulse happened, who's behind it, like what's really going on. Um, again, I think there is a bit of that classic like good versus evil going on. So if you are someone who loved The Stand, I think you'll enjoy Cell as well. If you hated The Stand, you're probably not going to like this one. And if you're kind of in the middle, um, you might like this one better because, again, I think it is a much shorter story than The Stand. It's not as complicated, but it has a lot of the same themes going on. I personally do like The Stand, so I think that helped with my enjoyment of this book. I also love, like, some of the commentary in this book. Um... The commentary is very like under the surface, but if you're if you're looking for it, it's in there. So considering the fact that this book was published in 2006, like it is still so current to today's to what's going on in the world today. Like I think the the fact that people on cell phones have turned into like mindless crazy people, like I don't know if Stephen King how had any idea, like, how true that would be, like, 10 years later, like, or almost 20 years later, I should say. Oh, my God. Like, with social media and all the stuff that's going on, even though people use their cell phones in a different way than maybe they did back then, like, actually making phone calls, like, if you substitute phone calls with, like, social media and stuff, like... Yeah, I think the commentary there about people that rely on these machines and what they can do to you and how they affect your life, I thought that was so fascinating and, again, so timely for today's world. And last but not least, the thing that I love most about King Books, the thing that I always love the most, is his character work. And I think it's really on point in this book. Because our main character, Clayton, we get to know him so well. Like, we get to know his hopes, his dreams, his thoughts, his family. 
Like, for a majority of the book, he's trying to get back to his family. He's trying to find his son. And he doesn't know if his family was impacted by the pulse or if they escaped like he did. So this is like a real driving force for him. And I think that's something that anyone can connect with. Um, I've read a lot of stories recently where you have a woman that's like doing whatever it takes to save their child. So I really appreciate it that in this case, it's a father who is going the extra mile, doing whatever it takes, putting himself at risk, putting himself on the line, all to get back to a child that he doesn't even know if that child is alive. But it doesn't matter to him. Like, that is his guiding force. And I think that that's really something anyone can connect with. So with all of that said, I don't think that this book is perfect. Um, again, King definitely does have a tendency to, like, kind of let things go on and on. His books are often criticized for being like too long and I don't think that this is any different. Yes, I think there's some stuff that could have been edited out of here. Again, we spend a lot of time on character development. So if you're like me and you like that stuff, that may not bother you. But if you're someone who more wants to like get to the point, um, that might be a problem. If yeah. If you've read a lot of King books, you'll know what I'm talking about. I do also think that the book is unclear at times about, like, what's really going on, especially as it gets towards the end. Um, like, the mystery of the pulse and how it happened and who's behind it, I feel like it's never really 100% clear. Like, it's hard to explain without giving away spoilers, but, like, there's a couple different things going on, and I feel like the book doesn't do the best job of, like, really, like, in black and white explaining it. And, like, I'm someone that I like things in black and white explained to me, wrapped up in a little bow, and so I did struggle with that a little bit here. And then, finally, the ending, um... Even though I enjoyed the majority of this book, I wasn't a big fan of the ending. It did not end like I wanted to. It ended a little, I think, again, with some unclarity, which I don't really like. And I feel like I wanted more at the end. Like, I wanted more. I wanted to see what happened next. So even if there was like a little epilogue or something, like, to see what happens afterwards, like... Does the world ever go back to normal? Do the survivors, like, do they keep going? The people that were turned into mindless crazies, can they ever come back? Like, there's just a lot of unanswered questions by the end of the book, and that kind of left me feeling a little disappointed. At the end of the day, I do think that the good outweighs the bad, so overall, I did enjoy this one. Again, it's not my favorite, never going to be a favorite or a top 10, but I found it fun and super entertaining. That is it for me today. So now I want to know from you, have you ever read Cell? Have you read The Stand? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more bookish stuff coming your way soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading.